And apparently uh, Harry's close bond with princesses Beatrice and Eugenie is considered a bit of an issue for the royal family. Now, look, they've been very close for a very long time. It can hardly be surprising. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I, you know, when it, when it was all... Um coming on top for Harry, certainly Eugenie was his only ally in the camp. And uh, he's very, very close to her. They've had a very, very close relationship for, for many, many years. Growing up, they were always the closest. And I think that with that severance of the relationship between his brother, his old pal, sparring partner, and uh, Eugenie was was really one to lend a shoulder for him. And we've seen her traveling over to California. She's been there a couple of times. Harry made an, uh, a stop over to Portugal when he was over in Europe with Meghan to see her, to see her new baby. And it, 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 I, I suppose for Harry, it's, it's decent that he still has an ally in, a, in the camp because nobody was spared from the sort of barbs from his autobiography, uh, from his memoir. And so uh, maybe Eugenie is the possibly the go-between for uh, to, to mend those relationships between his father and his brother. I mean, uh, certainly Harry, it seems, does want to mend those relationships moving forward. Now, in a recent interview, uh, Megan has admitted that she enjoys a mum's night out. Uh, that's not punishable by death as yet, Russell. Uh, it's good to see her being a little bit lighthearted. Um, look, I don't, I don't know if we necessarily read it, anything into that, but it's good to see her being relatable. Yeah, you know what? I think um, I think Meghan and Harry have taken themselves too seriously for a long time, and and, and Meghan, we saw her out on the red carpet. She was at the Variety Awards during the week. And she seems to be enjoying herself a bit more. I mean, she was pretty relaxed. They were asking her questions about her uh, Thanksgiving coming up. They were asking her questions about the projects in the pipeline. And she said, there's a lot in the pipeline. We're excited. We're working on things. Me and my husband have got big uh, announcements to make. And you hope, I think, most people think, that there will be a period where they sort of find their groove because... You know, the, the mudslinging that has been constant over the last uh, few years, and as I said, the Oprah Winfrey interviews, the, the constant PR junkets that they were doing to publicise their books and the, the Netflix series, and mentioning the royal family. That is certainly not what Harry and Meghan want. It's, uh, it's certainly not, not what the royal family want. And if Harry and Meghan do want a relationship with the royal family, then it's definitely not going to be down that uh, down that path. And so let's wait and see what happens for them. I do think that next year is going to be a big year for, for both sides of the family. Now, Megan has also said she's got a slate of new plans. Let's have a look. What is the thing that is, you know, driving the, the work that you're going to put out into the business? Things that make people feel, I was going to say good, but it's more than that. Things that make people feel something, right? And feel a sense of community. But we have so many exciting things on this slate. I can't wait until we can announce them. But um, I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too. Russell, what's being pitched? Well, I'd like to know because, you know, there's a, there's a lot of discussion in Hollywood and, uh, and even this side of the pond as well about what has been pitched. I mean, the re reputation isn't great at the moment. You know, they lost their £30 million uh, Spotify deal. The Netflix deal is looking pretty shaky. Some reports this week to say that Netflix are ready to cut and run from that deal. That was £100 million. I mean, as you said, it works out about $200 million for that that uh, deal with Netflix. Now, if those were to falter, then their reputation isn't great in uh, in Hollywood or the streaming space, the tech space. So what do they have in the pipeline? I mean, I thought Megan was thinking on her feet with that question, to be honest, and uh, and whether there are big projects in the pipeline. I, I, I think more next year is going to be a period of looking towards where they want to go long term, the charity work, the, the possibly wellness space for, uh, for Megan, not necessarily working with the big tech giants. We've seen that that didn't necessarily work. It got off to a faltering start. Even Harry's Invictus uh, show with Netflix, very, very worthy, but didn't really get the plaudits and the, and the ratings it deserves. So um, perhaps, you know, looking outside the box for Harry and Megan will, uh, will be a better plan for them. Now, lastly, the Mirror's reported this week that the royal children go to school on Saturday. Can you tell us why that is? Well, I know it's, you know, they're only young and it seems uh, quite a lot to go for six days a week. But uh, Lambrook, the school that they're at, they're preparing Prince George to potentially go to Eton. That's why uh, Princess Kate wasn't in Singapore with, uh, with Prince William. She was helping him prepare for exams. But Lambrook is a, is a fantastic school, fee-paying, but, you know, incredible 
incredible facilities. And it seems as though those facilities are what the children are enjoying at, on Saturdays. They go to school full day, you know, to play sport, to be amongst the sort of uh, facilities in the tech and uh, uh, sporting arena that they have. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it must be a pretty tiring week because I, I, I wouldn't fancy going to school six days a week. <laughs> Russell Myers, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. My pleasure.